Sarah woke me up Four in the morning Look at the stars and what they are warning us When the uh, Skirball invited me to have a type of introspective, for me I wasn't as interested in just showing the art in a simple white room. I wanted to create an environment that kind of disarmed the viewer to brought them in, to have them come, relax, become part of my world in a way to have them engage in my art. Having an exhibition at the Skirball, it's not just an exhibition, it's actually a, uh, a type of retrospective in a way, a career survey or a mid-career survey. And most of the pieces are from collections and actually historical pieces of art from my like childhood. From my, even my sixth grade teacher has my original art and we're going to be exhibiting some of that. The idea was to create a home, and I was very pleased and grateful for the Skirball to allow me to create this home. Step aside, you want anybody's right? Step aside, the girl, I can have you anytime. Step aside, you want anybody's right? Step aside, the girl. So this painting is actually going to be going into the study, into inspiration and heritage. And what I've been doing the last couple of years is I've been obsessed with my parents' story. Even though I was born and raised in LA, they are from Poland, or was what was once Poland. It was once Poland, it's now part of the Ukraine. Yeah, well. For some reason, it was a no-brainer in what I wanted to title the exhibition, which was, the door was always open. That was a phrase that my father would always tell me, that, and he would repeat it over and over and over again, not just meaning that his home was always my home, no matter how well or bad I was doing in my life, but he was also telling me it because he always wanted me to go visit my mom. <laughs> When my father passed away about three years ago, that phrase stuck in my head when I was writing his eulogy and uh, I put it on his headstone. And so it still kind of stayed with me. So when the Skirball invited me to have the exhibition, I wanted to create the door is always open. Not only to me that uh, my home is open to everyone, but that the creative door is always open to everyone. Within this exhibition, you're going to see many different rooms, and each room represents a theme within my body of work. Just to make my way, you could have said it yourself, but don't communicate. My mom and dad were both Holocaust survivors, and both their towns that they came from were completely mass murdered during the war. When my father passed away, I felt like I was the keeper of his story, and I felt like I needed to, if I didn't tell his story, it would be lost. So I needed to understand even more about him, even though I loved him, and we never had any big falling outs or any issues. So for me, having to go into his world, I was able to get a Fulbright Fellowship and went to Eastern Europe, and I started teaching art. And then from that, I use that as an excuse to visit their original hometowns. And the more I started learning about their hometowns, like my father's town was named Bedezna, which means birch tree in Slavic. Or the forest played a more important role in understanding how, understanding his survival. He was able to escape into the woods, and he met up with these Russian paratroopers, and he was a uh, partisan and fought for like three, three and a half years during the war. 
And so again, there's a lot more to the story that when I traveled to his towns and I found a book that was written by the survivors of his town that talked about his heroic deeds. What I've been starting to do is a body of work about the forest itself. The forest is the main theme, the main creature, that the forest was what was able to save my father and my mother and the Jews that did somehow not perish during the time with the Nazis. And so I kind of imagined in that world what existed in there. So I started creating my own kind of mythical forest. You just me. These are all going to kind of turn themselves into birch trees. These creatures seem to start coming together in this journey of who they are, who is this girl, the idea of bondage, which also is similar to the uh, Jewish tefillin that men uh, wrap around to remind them about God. The fish, which is the, the filter fish, this is a character I created and did a toy of. Me, when my mom made me gefilte fish, or when my aunt made me gefilte fish, it, I was tasting love. And the way gefilte fish is made is with three types of fish. I wanted to take not just the one gefilte fish, but I had these three uh, kind of fishes coming together. Because I think it's white fish, pike, and carp that make up a gefilte fish, and it takes about two days to make. And in my lifetime, my mom always tried to do shortcuts. Sometimes she would try to buy gefilte fish from the store and fool me. Sometimes she would take the white the fish from the store and then recook it to try to make me think I'm eating fresh gefilte fish. That never worked. So then she finally re resigned herself into, okay, I'm going to have to spend like three days or two days and making the fish. And so she always did that all the way to till, um, till when she died. Here you have the Magi of Truth. Sometimes I use the word truth, sometimes I use veritas, and sometimes I use in Hebrew, which is emet, and emet means truth. So this is a creature that actually was started out as part of Toby's secret society, also within the context of him. I'm actually creating a mezuzah that would go on your door, and it's also based on the magi of truth, of emet, in both. Signs. And this actual mezuzah was designed, the center part is designed based on my parents' uh, mezuzah. So this is actually a mold of my parents' mezuzah on their door of their home. And so I used that to help mold this thing. And so this, is, this mezuzah is going to be nailed onto the uh, door in my exhibition. The lion seems to be a creature that has, that I kind of started drawing in my sketchbooks while I was going through Poland on my way to Ukraine. And I wasn't sure why. And at first, the line symbol kept coming back to me. And there's a old photo of my dad and I. And on the, um, in the Torah, there's the uh, lines always holding up the Torah. And then there's this vase right here. And so I started drawing the line a lot. And so he's reoccurring and not knowing if he's there to protect us or for what, what particular reason, and I'll, I'll probably work that out. And then the vase that I've also put in drawings, I'll put it right here um, with the girl. Every room has a very specific tone and ideal, but it's wanted to create a space that had people come in, you know, you can come sit in the sofas, you know, I want people to relax rather than feeling that they couldn't necessarily engage with the art. Like somehow I, I don't understand the art, I'm not allowed to understand the art, the art's too good for me. For me, the strength of art is that it's all about humanity. It's about us. And for me, the strength of art is because it talks about who we are and the times that we're living in.